All right, so let's actually look at the procedure for doing immediate dent and sealing. Now, like I said, in your handout, I actually have three scenarios that take you through step by step, and it's for different bonding protocols. So the majority of you, I hope you're using one of three bonding agent options. And truthfully, the literature actually recommends when you do immediate dent and sealing to either use a three-step etch and rinse bonding agent, so a fourth generation bonding agent. An example of this would be OptiBond FL or Scotch Bond Multipurpose. Or you can use a two-step self-etching bonding agent. So that would be a sixth generation bonding agent. An example of that would be Clearfill SE. You could alternatively also use a universal bonding agent such as Scotch Bond Universal. There's a little bit of a difference between each of these bonding agents and I'm going to go through one of these, but if you happen to use one of the ones I do not go into, just refer to the handout. I actually lay it out step by step. Now, depending on which bonding agent you use, I'm going to definitely recommend that you refer to the manufacturer's instructions. Honestly, that's kind of one of the biggest things I always say and I tell everybody is if you're using material at some point in your career, you have to open those instructions and you need to look at those directions and understand how to use that product. The reality is, is you're completing the manufacturing process for these materials, so you need to understand how to use them. Now, in this specific example, I'm going to actually tell you how to do immediate dent and sealing if you use Scotch Bond Universal. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm very familiar with that bonding agent because we use that commonly in my clinic with Reliax Ultimate, the self-adhesive resin cement. So one thing before I talk about this procedure, you need to know a couple of things about Scotch Bond Universal. Now, Scotch Bond Universal is a universal bonding agent made by 3M SB. Now, the unique thing about this product is it is a universal bonding agent, so it's designed to be used for direct and indirect restorations. Now, obviously, in this specific example, we're going to be imagining that we're going to cement an Emax lithium disilicate crown to the tooth. So, when you use Scotch Bond Universal, they give you three options on how to use that. You can either do a total etch technique where you take phosphoric acid, you apply that to the enamel and the dentin, and then you apply your bonding agent. That would be a total etch technique. You can do a selective etch technique where you selectively etch the enamel with phosphoric acid. And then obviously you rinse that off, dry it, and then you apply the bonding agent to the enamel and to the dentin. And then they also have a self etching technique as well, where you do not use phosphoric acid at all. You simply apply the Scotch Bond Universal to the enamel and to the dentin. And basically the acidic monomers in the Universal adhesive actually self etch the tooth. And then you also have the primer and the adhesive in there as well. So you basically do the whole process without using phosphoric acid. Now, if you look at the literature on Scotch Bond Universal, what you will learn is, is you get the strongest bond strengths to the tooth if you choose a total etch or selective etch technique. Self-etch techniques are very poor with simplified adhesives like Scotch Bond Universal. So anytime you have a simplified adhesive, such as a fifth generation bonding agent, a seventh generation bonding agent, or universal bonding agent. You do not want to use those as self etch only bonding protocols. So for this specific example that we're going to talk about, I'm going to describe a total etch technique. However, you could just as well use a selective etch technique and get very good results with this specific bonding protocol. All right, so you just prepped your tooth for your Emacs crown. And next thing you're going to do is we're going to do immediate dent and sealing. So to do this, we're actually going to take our phosphoric acid. We're going to etch the enamel and the dentin of that preparation. I'm going to etch this for 15 seconds. I'm going to rinse this off and dry this gently. I don't want to over dry the prep because I don't want my collagen fibers to collapse. That's an issue if you over dry your preparations. All right, next we're going to apply our Scotch Bond Universal to the dentin. 
Yes, we etched the enamel and the dentin earlier, but we're only gonna apply the Scotch Bond Universal to the dentin. I recommend if you're using something like a micro brush, you don't use too much bonding agent at this point. You don't want the bonding agent to just smother the preparation. I would try to apply the bonding agent very thinly to the preparation so it's not causing a lot of excess to kind of roll off the dentin onto your enamel. But try your best to just apply the dentin bonding agent to the dentin and then we're gonna light cure this for about 20 seconds. Obviously, how long you light cure is gonna be somewhat dependent on also what type of curing light you're using. So if you're using a very high intensity curing light, you probably do not wanna go that long. Just do your normal curing for your bonding agent with your curing light. I actually have a whole separate video that talks about curing lights, and I actually talked about a system called the check mark system, which is a really cool um, tool that you can use and 3M and a company called Blue Light Analytics will actually allow you to use this instrument they designed that will test your curing light and basically compare that to the materials you use and give you recommendations on how long you should cure your material based off of your curing light. Really cool stuff. Uh, definitely check that out in Evidence Based Quarterly 2017. So next, after you cure your bonding agent, some providers actually recommend you place a little bit of flowable composite onto the preparation over that bonding agent on the dentin. And obviously, if you're gonna do this step, you really only should do this if you have the space available to do so. That's obviously gonna thicken up that layer a little bit more, and it will take away some of your restoration space. So do not do this if you don't have the space requirements. Now we know whenever we cure a bonding agent or if we cure composite, the top layer of that resin is actually unpolymerized. We call this the oxygen inhibition layer. Now regardless whether you actually just placed the bonding agent or you placed the bonding agent and you added some flowable to the prep, it's actually recommended that you remove the oxygen inhibition layer. Now the oxygen inhibition layer can actually be removed in multiple ways. One way you could do this is you could actually use a glycerin gel, um, like liquid strip from Ivoclar Vivadent or Deox from uh, Ultradent. And basically what you do is you apply this glycerin gel to the tooth. You know, obviously you're gonna cover the bonding agent that you applied or the flowable composite. And then once it's on there, you're gonna recure the tooth for 10 seconds. That's gonna actually cause that inhibition layer to be polymerized. Alternatively, if you don't have a glycerin gel in your office, you could actually use 70% ethyl alcohol, and you can put that onto a cotton pellet, and you can actually scrub the bonding agent on the prep or the flowable composite if you did that step. Scrub that with the 70% ethyl alcohol for about 10 seconds, and that will also remove the oxygen inhibition layer. So one of the reasons why the immediate dentin sealing protocol recommends that you remove the oxygen inhibition layer has to do with there's some suspicion in the literature that that oxygen inhibition layer could inadvertently affect your temporary materials and it could also affect the PVS materials if you're doing a temporary or you're taking a PVS impression. Now, to be honest, if you're doing CAD CAM dentistry, you're doing same day crowns, it's probably not gonna be very critical that you remove the oxygen inhibition layer. If you have the means to do so, if it's not taking too much time out of your actual workflow, probably not a bad idea to do it, but it's not as critical. Now, if you are doing temporary restoration, um, you wanna remove the oxygen inhibition layer it's still a good idea to maybe go ahead and coat the preparation with something like petroleum jelly prior to fabricating your temporary so the temporary material does not inadvertently bond to your bonding agent or to your flowable composite. All right, so you place your bonding agent, maybe you put some flowable on there and you remove the oxygen inhibition layer. The next step of immediate dent and sealing is you actually want to go back in to the prep with a diamond burr and you want to gently refresh your enamel margins. You know, it's hard to keep your bonding agent just on the dentin, 
Sometimes it's going to spill over to your enamel margin. If you use flowable composite, that can actually spill over to your enamel margin a little bit. So what you want to do is just take a fine diamond burr, go back in and gently reprep your enamel margins to expose that fresh cut enamel for bonding at a later date. All right, after you refresh your enamel margins, if you're doing cat cam dentistry, you're ready to scan the prep. If you're doing traditional temporary PVS impression, you're ready to do that as well. Now studies have shown that if you do immediate dent and sealing and you place a provisional restoration, that a good seal provisional can actually be maintained in the mouth for up to 12 weeks without any decrease in your final bond strength of that final restoration. Now one of the things that the immediate dent and sealing protocol recommends is that before you submit your crown, you actually roughen the dent bonding agent or the flowable composite with either a diamond burr or you use like some type of intraoral micro sandblasting. Some uh, experts will actually recommend that you use the CoJet uh, by 3M, which is a uh, silane coated uh, sandblasting agent that actually is designed to roughen the surface of that preparation. Um, you really need to be careful though not to touch the enamel margins at all or go anywhere near the finish line of the preparation. Obviously that's very sacred ground. That's where your crown tooth interface is. So when you roughen the prep, do not go near the margin. All right, so I said at the beginning of this, we were gonna be using Scotch Bond Universal in this example. So at this point, after I've roughened the preparation, I'm actually ready to go ahead and etch the tooth using a total etch technique. So I'm gonna etch the enamel and the dentin of the preparation with phosphoric acid for 15 seconds. I'm gonna rinse that off and I'm gonna gently dry the preparation. At this point, I'm gonna apply the Scotch Bond Universal bonding agent to the enamel and to the dentin of the preparation. Now, um, at this point, I have the option to cure the bonding agent. And if you actually read the directions for Scotch Bond Universal, when you use it with Rel-IX Ultimate, they give you the option to cure the bonding agent before you cement the crown. And so typically, I recommend at this point, since you've already placed bonding agent during the immediate dent and sealing uh, process and you cured it, I would recommend at this point when you place the bonding agent, you do not cure it you go ahead and leave it unpolymerized and you submit your crown over top of that. There's actually materials in the Scotch Bond Universal that are compatible with the Reliance Ultimate that allows that to cure once it's actually seated. Now obviously in this example I should have probably um, put this first but if you're already preparing the tooth for bonding you really probably should have already prepared your crown for bonding as well. So I'm also assuming that you did some type of preparation to the intaglio of the Emacs crown. And so if you look at the directions for using Relax Ultimate self-adhesive resin cement, if you're doing an Emacs crown, they recommend that you go ahead and do hydrofluoric acid etch or some type of suitable alternative to the crown like uh, Monobon Etch and Prime. And once you do the etch, you're using some type of silane. If you're using Monobond Etch and Prime, the etch and the actual silane are together. Um, but after you do the silane, you apply the Scotch Bond Universal to the intaglio of that crown. And again, you do not cure the Scotch Bond Universal at this point. Once you've got the Scotch Bond Universal in the intaglio of the crown, you're ready to add your cement to the crown and place that onto the tooth which you already prepared. Once your tooth's prepared, once the crown's prepared, you're ready to cement with the resin cement of your choice. In this example, I use Relax Ultimate. And this specific type of cement is very compatible with Scotch Bond Universal. And I just find that the whole process is very user-friendly, very straightforward. And I can also use this product with multiple other things in the practice. I can use this with gold restorations if I want to. I can use this with zirconia restorations if I want to. I can also use this 
on um, posts. I mean, really, it's got such a wide variety of applications. I find this specific type of cement very useful. And I can use a Scotch Bond Universal not only for the crowns, but I can use that for ceramic inlays, onlays. I can use that with direct composites or uh, dual cure resin core buildup materials. Um, so there's a wide variety of application for this, and that's why we use that in the practice I work at. So that's it. I mean, that's really it. That's immediate dent and sealing. I mean, the big takeaway is you're applying a bonding agent immediately after you prepare the tooth. And so that, in essence, is going to give you stronger bonds to your tooth, especially if you're doing bonded restorations. And so, you know, obviously I gave you one example of this using products that I commonly use. Um, I did put some other examples in the handout. And really it comes down to this. Whatever materials you use in your practice, you probably just need to review those. Make sure that whatever you're using, it makes sense. Um, if you're using the recommendations I put in your handout and your products are slightly different, you may have to tweak the actual directions a little bit. And if you need help or you have questions, just put your comments down below or let me know. And I'll be happy to look at some of your materials with you. And we can maybe explore what's the best option for you to do immediate dent and sealing in your practice. Now, one of the last things I want to comment on is I read tons of articles on immediate dent and sealing. And uh, one of the big authors for this concept is Pascal Manier. And so in many of his articles, he actually went through the process of somewhat explaining how he does immediate dent and sealing. And repeatedly, I saw a specific step that just confused me to no end. And so it's in regards to his recommendation for using a three-step etch and rinse adhesive or a two-step self-etch adhesive. And so one of the things he recommends is that when you use, say, like a three-step uh, etch and rinse adhesive, he actually recommends when you apply the bonding agent to the tooth, that you do not uh, light cure the bonding agent right before you submit your crown. Because remember, you did your immediate dent and sealing early on, and they'll say at appointment two, you're reapplying a bonding agent, and then you're cementing your crown. At that second visit, or right before you submit the crown, when you apply the bonding agent, he recommends you do not cure the adhesive. Now, for the majority of the adhesives that I've used that are three-step etch and rinse or two-step self-etch, I don't see how you could not cure the adhesive. Actually, the manufacturer recommends you cure the adhesive. And so that was confusing me to no end. And then I realized something. I realized that a lot of the restorations that he was placing in these articles, they were almost like feldspathic porcelain jacket crowns. So the porcelain was not super thick. It was really thin and really was only replacing the enamel. And so in that essence, the depth of cure is a lot more shallow. You're not having to go through as much material. Because I literally do not see a way that you can cure a light cure adhesive or light cure bonding agent through a Emax crown if that crown is one or 1.5 millimeters thick. That just will not work. And so in his articles, he's actually doing more of a biomimetic approach. Um, it's very conservative uh, preparation. So the thickness of that porcelain is very thin. And so in those situations, he's probably able to get away with that because the curing light can penetrate those thin restorations a lot easier. And he doesn't recommend curing it because there's that risk of not being able to seat the crown all the way. So I do recommend if you're using a light cure adhesive and you're applying that right before you submit your crown, you try to keep that as thin as possible. You really don't want to bulk this up a lot and really you know, take away the space you need to submit your crown. You want that crown to seat all the way if possible. So use very thin amounts of your adhesive right before you apply your crown for cementation. 
So that's it for this one. I know it was a long one. Um, hopefully you have a little bit better grasp of what immediate dent and sealing is. And really, you know, a lot of literature said there's really no good reason not to do this right now. I mean, we can think of reasons why we do not want to do something, but there's really no good reason not to do this. Um, the literature supports that it's going to give you better bond strengths. And we're in a world of a lot of adhesive dentistry now. We're bonding a lot of restorations, direct restorations and indirect restorations. So if you want to improve your bond strengths and you want to improve the longevity of your work, consider doing immediate dent and sealing as part of your practice.